Our thoughts, feelings, and overall mental health play a large part in how we experience sex. Mental health and sex are strongly connected in many fascinating ways. For example, the brain releases the neurotransmitters dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin during sex. What does this do? This increases one's happiness and relaxation while also temporarily reducing those negative feelings that can come along with depression. With our sex life affecting our mental health and our mental health affecting our sex life, there are a lot of interesting facts to learn about the two together. So here are five psychological facts about sex and mental health. Number one, feeling sad after sex. It could be post-coital dysphoria. You've just had great sex, but then you start to cry. Mm, what's going on here? This is actually called postcoital dysphoria, or PCD, and is quite common. This is when one experiences intense sadness, distress, or anger post-sex or post-orgasm. According to a 2015 survey of college women published in the journal Sexual Medicine, 46% of women experienced it at least once, while 5% said they felt sad and lonely after intercourse several times in a period of four weeks. Postcoital dysphoria happens to males and females, and the authors of the study also state that there appeared to be no relationship between PCD and intimacy in close relationships. So, you may find yourself suddenly sad and in tears, even though a few moments ago you were having the time of your life. There's still much research needed on the cause of this, but certified sex therapist Ian Kerner believes that it has to do with a release of hormones, or perhaps vulnerability. Kerner explained in an article from Essence that post-sex is a reflective period, and that can bring up emotions and experiences you normally keep under wraps. Number two, positive self-image and masturbation. A 2011 study found that masturbating may just improve how you view yourself. The study states that among women, masturbation in childhood and adolescence has been associated with positive sexual experiences later in life and a healthy self-image. In another study of adolescent females aged 16 to 18, those with negative or indifferent views about masturbation reported negative first sexual experiences compared with those who held positive views of masturbation. That can make a big difference depending on if you've mastered masturbation. <clears throat> no one? While the study's results indicated the majority of males reported masturbation at 73.8%, while females reported at 48.1%, the topic is still highly stigmatized with a negative view. The study states, underreporting by adolescents has been found even with the use of confidential reporting techniques, further showing the shame and guilt that can be rooted in this topic for some. The study goes on to include highly interesting information on the topic, with sex education often omitting the topic of masturbation, parents having a difficult time discussing the topic with their child, with some having, the study says, the hope that their children will view masturbation unfavorably. The study also explains that in 1994, when US Surgeon General Jocelyn Elders recommended including masturbation as a topic in public sexual education, she was heavily criticized and ultimately resigned. So what's all the fuss? It looks like from the results of this study, your sexual experiences and self-image may just have a chance to improve a bit. Number three, heart attack myth, unless you're cheating. While it's often depicted in movies, someone suddenly going into cardiac arrest during sexual intercourse, it's also not likely to happen, but rather just great comedic timing. It's very rare to have a heart attack during sex, with less than 1% of heart attacks occurring during sex. But still, people tend to hold on to this heart attack myth. What is fascinating is that research has discovered that at the off chance heart attacks do happen during sex, it more often happens to men when they're cheating when in comparison to when someone's having sex with a spouse. Some believe it could be due to the guilt, anxiety, and overall psychological distress that can arise from cheating, with this stress affecting the heart. A 2012 study published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine explains that several interpersonal, sexual, and biological factors are associated with having extramarital affairs. Unfaithfulness in men seems to be associated with a higher risk of major cardiovascular events. Ah, what sex does to the heart. Number four, arousal non-concordance. 
As mentioned before, our thoughts, emotions, and state of mind are an important part in sex and arousal. A research study published in 2020 found that sexual inactivity increased among US adults, predominantly younger men, between 2000 and 2018, with potential public health implications. So why is this happening? The study's authors have a few ideas. The study states that rates of depression and anxiety have increased among young US adults. US adolescents are increasingly postponing the start of adult activities, including sex and dating. And it has been hypothesized that the introduction of smartphones has resulted in less opportunity for and skills in real world human interactions. So how much can anxiety affect someone's sex life? Well, for one, it can be pretty difficult to relax enough to enjoy sex if you're experiencing anxiety. There's also arousal non-concordance. This is when the mind does not match up with what the body is feeling. Your body may be aroused, but your mind is just not feeling it today, or the other way around. This often happens to males and females with anxiety. Self-consciousness can also play a role along with anxiety when it comes to sex. According to Joe Court, certified sex therapist and psychotherapist, with males, not performing can make them even more anxious, which then perpetuates the erectile dysfunction. He goes on to note, but it's not really an erectile disorder, it's anxiety interfering with erectile focus. For a woman, experiencing arousal and orgasm may become difficult if they have anxiety. Physiologically speaking, anxiety can take over pleasure in certain cases. A 2018 study published in the journal Women's Health explains that low sexual desire is strongly linked to depression. A lack of subjective arousal and pleasure are linked to trait anxiety. The sensations of physical sexual arousal may lead to fear rather than to pleasure. The study goes on to explain that the most common type of sexual pain is 10 times more common in women with previous diagnoses of anxiety disorder. Clinicians often do not routinely inquire about their patients' sexual concerns, particularly in the context of psychotic illness. But careful assessment, diagnosis, and explanation of their situation is necessary and in keeping with patients' wishes. Number 5. Time to get creative Remember good old oxytocin? This hormone is released during sexual activity and linked to the intensity of orgasms, according to Healthline. But did you know that this love hormone can also get you feeling creative? UK psychologist Dr. Becky Spellman explained in an article for the private therapy clinic that although oxytocin is intended to make you feel closer to your partner, it's also able to create cognitive flexible pathways in the brain, which can foster creative thinking and improve problem solving. The power of oxytocin and sex. So, did you learn something new about sex and mental health? What were you most surprised to learn from this video? Feel free to let us know in the comment section down below. Share your thoughts. Get creative. Uh, no, no, not that way. Not here, folks. Did you enjoy this video? If so, make sure to hit the like button, share this video with someone who could use it, and subscribe for more psychology content. Thanks for watching, Psych2Goers. See you next time.